Okay, picture this, y'all. You are a woman who is 29 or so, and you decide that you're going to go back to school. You've been wanting to go back to school for a minute, so you do. You're in class, and when you're in class, you forgot that you're supposed to do an assignment. The assignment was for you to talk about something that happened within the civil rights movement. Now, you get called up to the front. You ain't do your assignment, so you like, shit, I got to make up something real quick. So instead of making up something, you tell a story that your grandmother told you, but she also told you to keep it. But did you listen? No, because you need to get this grade for this history lesson and you just going to say it. So you tell this most fantastic story. People don't believe you because the story was about this fantasy information of these magical Negroes and everybody is like, girl, but you tell the story and in one part of the story, you're talking about how each of this, I don't want to get it out, but anyway, each of these people, these people who were the first family had this bright white hair. You always cover your hair. So when you finish the story, because people don't believe you, you take off your scully, your hair is pure white. Everybody is like, oh my God, shook, right? Your professor see me after class and you're like, fuck. So what do you do? You go see him after class and you are trying to tell him, listen, my grandmother told me this. This is what happened, blah, blah, blah. I believe you. Okay, but my grandmother said that this is what, I believe you. And you're like, what? You, you believe me? And he's like, yes. And I want you to go to this program. So I'm writing a, a note for you and you need to go to this orientation. This orientation is tonight. You need to get there by tonight. Don't worry about anything. Here's the invitation. Just go. They will know that I sent you. So you sitting there like, um, tonight? Yeah, tonight, go. So you decide to go. And when you go, this starts everything for you. Things that you did not know about who you were as a person. You still have questions. You still don't know what's going on. But this opens up a world to you that you didn't even know existed with vampires, with ghouls, with ghosts, with hoodoo and voodoo culture with, um, let me see what else was there, werewolves and priestess and sirens and water nymphs. And you are trying to figure out and navigate this space because you're like, wait a minute, they got magical Negroes? Am I a magical Negro? This story, I don't want to give it away, but they had a talking cat who was a hood ass talking cat who used to be a black man. Hilarious. The dialogue in this was extremely blackity black, black ass dialogue. And when you get into it, you can see parts of yourself. There were stories, there were parts in the story that were about trying to find who you are. I loved it because there was also parts about uh, sisterhood and how sometimes you just need to apologize because things are not what they seem, but you are feeling some type of way. There are parts in here about how when you deny yourself, you cannot be your full realized self because of past trauma. There, I don't want to give it away, but it's just a really good book. I'm going to show you what the book is. So this is book one. Okay. This is book one. And it's such a good book. <laughs> I can't even describe. If you like fantasy, if you like black ass fantasy, this one is um it sets, t takes place in Atlanta, like underground Atlanta. If you are all about the witches, the warlocks, the vampires, the black ass uh, ebonic sprinkled in the like all of that, this is your book. It is so good. I cannot wait for number two because there it ended on a cliffhanger i'm gonna tell you that it ended on the cliffhanger like a whodunit so i'm telling you that so you don't get into it and be like damn it ends on a cliffhanger and 
What I also like is that the author put in notes in the back that allows you to process like, oh, I've read this author's other books before. So these are where these characters have come in. And she puts the books that they are in. So even if you decide to go back and read those books, you'll know who those characters are. Chef's Kiss, I love this book. It was, I gotta show y'all one part that was, that was funny. Hold on. So I'm gonna give you a little background on this part. The character, the main character, Maggie, who has the white hair, she just went through a, a small traumatic crisis with another main character. And because of that, she wants to tell on him because he is a teacher. And so she wants to tell the admin. The other character, her name is Susie. Susie's father is, is a queen. Okay. He is a queen and he has a way of speaking to her, which is very derogatory. But in the book, it says he loves her. So when the three main characters are talking about what happened, he comes out of pocket to say this. And he is on speakerphone. Mind you, they don't know this person. They don't know this man. So this is him speaking. And now you're on here crying like a little bitch, Jean. And this is how he talks to his daughter as well. Jean asks, as I looked at the two girls, their mouths dropped. <laughs> and this is how he talks. My daughter would never. Who raised y'all? And so one of the main characters is like, this your pop speaking like this? He said, address me, boo, and not my daughter. Who raised y'all motherfuckers? <laughs> he asked again as everyone stared at the phone. Instead of being Karens and running to the office to tattletale, you handle it like a boss bitch. Next time you see him, you need to look at him and everyone else is beneath you. Like everyone is beneath you. This is the dialogue in this, in the, uh, throughout this book. Like straight up interested dialogue like this. So if you are into ghouls and goblins and ghosts and vampires and hood shit and people who think they are above because of legacy, um, if you like thrillers, I will say, giving you, I always give you information about how there could be triggers in here. So uh, rape is talked about, um, torture is talked about, there's information about blood. Um, so if that's not your jam, you know, just be aware of that and get it. It's on Kindle Unlimited. Kindle Unlimited. It's available now. I, I love this book. I love, I really, really love this book. It's one of my favorite books for, I would say this year that I've read. One of the top that I've read for sure. 